In Mushigame, Mitsugu Tanaka and brother Yasuaki Tanaka of Marutu Koi Farm are on watch duty. A number of parent sets have been placed together on the farm in the hope that they will spawn during the night. However, these parents will all be artificially spawned. The parents are in show pools outside and a microphone is connected with a speaker system in the office so the brothers can listen for the telltale sign of splashing to indicate the spawning and their evening's work has commenced. At 8.55 the signal that Mitsugo and Yasuo have been waiting for arrives. Using just torchlight and in the pouring rain they have to identify firstly whether any eggs have actually been released and secondly which female has released them. With the female identified she is caught and moved to a separate tank. Obviously they don't want her to continue spawning naturally. The vent is again checked to ensure that she is the correct female. She has to be left for one hour for her eggs to loosen so they can be stripped more easily by hand. With the other parents secured again, Mitsuga and Yesu can return to the drive for a while. Shigeo Tanika is one of the pioneers of spawning koi artificially. He is well aware it will be a long night ahead. After one hour has elapsed, the female is brought inside and anaesthetised. The bowl she is in is one metre in diameter. Outside, another female, a Tencho Kahaku, has started to spawn as well and is also moved into isolation. Slowly but surely the female falls under the effects of the anaesthetic as Shigeo and Yasu look on patiently. Finally she succumbs and is wrapped carefully in a towel. Before the eggs are removed, her vent and surrounding area must be dried thoroughly, as when the eggs are touched by water they will start to harden, preventing them from being fertilised later. When the female is turned the right way up, the eggs freely flow from her vent into the metal bowl. As the flow slows, gentle pressure is applied to the abdomen of the koi to ensure that all the eggs are removed. Any eggs left could cause problems in the future. Seven hundred and eighty grams is approximately four hundred thousand eggs.
with the eggs stripped from the female and male kahaku is netted to be paired with her. At the same time, another female has started to release eggs. Shigiyoshi, the eldest of the three brothers, has also arrived. All members of the family are involved in the spawning process. Like the female, the male is wrapped in a towel, although it seems he's still got a bit of fight left in him so he's returned to the anaesthetic. When finally ready, the vent and surrounding area is again dried to prevent water contamination. A gentle squeeze and sperm is soon coming from the vent. As the sperm comes out, it is sucked up into a syringe. The work of the male and the female is over for the night. Now the rest of the process is in the hands of the breeder. The plastic strips state that this is a sanke crossed with kaku and will be used to identify the eggs later. The eggs are placed in the metal cup which already contains a measure of sperm mixed with ringer solution. The now fertilised eggs are then distributed evenly over the nylon spawning ropes which are attached to a plastic frame. The eggs are sticky and fix themselves immediately to the fine hairs of the spawning ropes. The frame is turned over and the process repeated to ensure even distribution of the eggs. The plastic strip is attached to the frame to identify it. The first of many frames of hopefully fertilised eggs is complete. 11.30pm and there is still a long night's work ahead for the Tanika family. 5.20am and it's a damp misty morning in Mushigame following a night of rain. For the Tanika family their work is just about complete. The frames of spawning brushes are now suspended in concrete ponds awaiting transfer to the mud ponds later in the day. Shigiyoshi checks one remaining female who, so far, hasn't laid any eggs. When she will is hard to predict.
Different breeders handle their eggs in different ways. These are the ponds of Kanoikoi Farm who, like Marajou, hatch the fry in holding nets in a mud pond before transferring them to their growing ponds. Others may hatch the fry inside the koi house or in the mud pond into which the koi are just allowed to swim freely upon hatching. These fry are just nine days from their eggs being laid and fertilized. The tiny transparent bodies enable you to see the tiny swim bladder of air inside. Even at this size and age, the selection process of some varieties commences. All over the mountains you can find people, young and old, men and women, dipping plastic tubes into the water. This is Kuroko Sembets, or Selection. The breeders have long learned that when breeding black based varieties such as Showa, Utsuri or Komoriu for example, but only the black fry will develop into good examples. At just one week old, the white and orange fry are rejected. With the long warm summer days, the young fry develop and grow extremely quickly. At just 18 days old, these young show are extremely active feeders. Already their pigmentation is starting to develop. As can be seen, their pond is alive with activity and insect life. Tiny Daphnia being their staple diet, supplemented with powdered artificial food. These are Sankei that were born the same day. Their patterns are becoming apparent, although some clearly lack the requisite sumi needed on Sankei. It's hard to believe that a few months earlier, these ponds were drained of their water, left to dry and then filled with snow. The abundance of life that has developed over such a short period since their snow melted is quite amazing. Above water, life is abundant too, and indeed, the aerial display put on by the dragonflies and damselflies also contributes to new life underwater, as they mate and lay their eggs in the ponds. Above lays an aerial predator, a predator for whom the many mud ponds prove a rich hunting ground. The herons are just one danger the koi face during their short time in the mud ponds. The weather perhaps poses a greater danger. When July arrives, so does the rainy season. The rain is vital to keep the mud ponds topped up with fresh water. However, too often it can be the wrong kind of rain. Torrential downpours fueled by typhoons. Heavy rain that can wipe out a pond of fry. Heavy rain that bursts the banks of mud ponds, sending their contents spilling down the mountainside. These Sankei fry have survived all natural danger and disaster so far, and are now around six weeks old. They are the same ones we saw earlier. Now is the time for saito -san to undertake the first selection process.
Saito-san is assisted in netting the pond by his younger brother, and also by Norwegian koi dealer Arne Christian Mellon, who is visiting Japan to experience the summer season. With the net drawn in, there is a swarming mass of orange, white and black. However, on closer look, the number of fry that exhibit all three colours is perhaps fewer than first thought. Sankei is considered by many to be perhaps the hardest variety to breed, and, already at an early stage, it's clear that the number will reduce somewhat when the selection is completed. At this early stage, the requirement is that the koi should exhibit all three colours. Red, albeit orange really now, white and black. However, too much black is undesirable. Armed with small nets, Saito-san, his brother, wife and Arne set about sorting through the six-week old fry, keeping only those that display desirable characteristics. This is a small number of the Sanke kept from the selection process. It will be returned to the bud ponds to continue growing. These are Kahaku of the same age feeding in the mud pond prior to the first selection taking place. As you can see, some are completely red, Akamuji, or all white, Shiramuji. Others clearly display undesirable pattern characteristics. Here we see some of the same kahaku after the first selection process has taken place. Saito San returns them to the mud pond where they will continue to grow for a further two weeks when they will be sorted through again. As the day draws to a close, Saito San makes his daily visit to his mud ponds to check and feed the koi. Even though the ponds have automatic feeders, they still need to be checked on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. 